Hi, my name is Milo Harries and I'm a PhD student in the English faculty, as this cardigan makes regrettably clear. <laughs> uh, my research is on theatre in the context of the climate crisis, uh, with a particular interest in space. Um, I'm about nine months into my PhD, uh, which is actually it's a great and a very exciting phase to be in, because I'm starting to get the building blocks of my thesis um, and starting to put them together into different shapes. Um, bringing these ideas that will hopefully be at the heart of my research uh, into conversation with each other. Um, and that's what I'd like to do today. I'd like to uh, outline a couple of the ideas that I'm working on um, and that I've come across and I'd like to put them into uh, uh, conversation, bring them into contact. So I'm taking my first idea from uh, Timothy Morton and Bruno Latour, whose work engages with a kind of vagueness that patrols the perimeter of modern life in Western societies. So they identify a lack of clarity or a lack of visibility at the edges of our daily lives. Um, so this is a phenomenon that I refer to in my notes uh, to help me remember and understand, although I wouldn't say it to my supervisor, as a kind of cotton eye Joe problem. Um, so whether it's food or clothing or um, energy, pollution, sewage, household waste, the things that actually make up our, our daily lives, um, we're not quite sure where these things come from. And once we're finished with them, we're not quite sure where they go. So both Morton and Latour describe this phenomenon using the image of somehow floating above the earth, a certain detachment or, or distance or general in this sort of generality. Um, but it's maybe actually easiest to grasp in something that Morton borrows from Slavoj Žižek, um, which is an inflection of the word away. Um, so Zizek uses this to describe what happens when you flush the loo. You don't know where it goes exactly, um, and it's not your problem anymore, it's not your responsibility, um, it just goes away. It's also pretty clear when we think about um, rubbish, particularly non-recyclable uh, rubbish, if you're throwing something away. Um, we don't actually tend to think of it as transport, we think of it as sort of a kind of vanishing. Um, so we don't we don't think that it's going somewhere to be left there or to be dispersed by burning. Um, we don't think of it as sending something simply from A to B. It's just really, in general terms, it's just from A, it goes, just goes away. Um, so for Morton, this speaks to an ontology, a philosophy of being and a political um, ontology that doesn't recognize planetary limits. Um, so it's a, it's a world concept that doesn't have any time for sewage plants and it doesn't have any precise consciousness of landfills or incinerators. Um, things come to us from and disappear into a sort of abstract and non-limited or unlimited space. Um, and the reason that's political is that any world concept that includes this space will be inclined to be extremely casual about its resources and also irresponsible with its, with its actions. This makes a certain kind of sense, right? So Latour um, observes it's very difficult to be or to feel responsible for something if you don't really know what you've done. You might know in a general sense, um, but you don't know precisely. I occasionally think of this as acknowledging that um, we are responsible for climate change, but not feeling that I am responsible for climate change. Um, and that's where Latour, locates this strange dissonance of those kinds of um, these sort of forms of everyday climate denial. So this feeling that a scientific consensus might be true, but it's somehow not real. So it's possible, but it's not plausible. Um, and for Latour, this begins in this ontology or cosmology that's deeply and structurally incurious about the way life is actually sustained. So he talks about the, the figure of the globe so a very generalized and universalizing world picture, but that lacks detail. It's not composed detail by detail. It's, um, there's a, a certain kind of vague abstract knowledge, but that lacks the specificity to encourage or enable responsibility. So this first idea we sort of summarizing is this uh, with, the, with the word away. Um, now the second concept I'm borrowing from an academic called Shannon Jackson. Um, and she's interested in what she describes as an infrastructural aesthetic, um, which is descended from Marcel Duchamp and Bertolt Brecht. Um, and she considers uh, what she calls, and so I'm quoting her here, 
social practices that provoke reflection on the supporting infrastructures of both aesthetic objects and living beings. So in other words, what we've got from Shannon Jackson is an approach to art that's sensitive, particularly sensitive to support. So at the risk of flattening the nuance, the nuance of her work, we might say that Jackson is arguing that the aesthetic can be a way of showing up our systems of maintenance and dependence. So the networks, in other words, that keep us alive. Um, so she devotes a chapter, for example, to Meryl Lederman Euclides, um, who's artist in residence at the US Department of Sanitation, and whose work repeatedly engages with the conditions of visibility of these networks. So uh, in Touch Sanitation Performance, which is 1979-1980, um, Euclides shook hands with all eight and a half thousand sanitation workers in New York as a way of expressing gratitude for their care for the city, but also implicitly and very simply as a way of insisting that they were there. So her work insists on noticing the things that this supposedly frictionless society repeatedly and structurally disavows. So there are some things which we might be, or a society might be committed to not noticing and committed to vanishing. Um, and Jackson's arguing that there is a particular kind of aesthetic attention or there are particular kinds of aesthetic um, practice or process that can make those systems visible, that can change the conditions of visibility. So bringing those two, two ideas together, this infrastructural aesthetic, which shows up systems of support with this notion of a way, I hope it's relatively clear, or you might have arrived there before me, that this kind of infrastructural art is quite forcefully opposed to the ontology that Morton and Latour are talking about. So this is art that's dedicated to materializing and delimiting this abstract, limitless away. This traces our connections to this finitude on which we depend. So it's showing up a different reality to the one that we might consider plausible or the one that we might assume that we live in and insisting on things that we I say we but things that things that repeatedly go unseen um, and what my research is interested in what i'm interested in is i'm interested in how theater can intervene here so how it can produce space or produce spaces to make the invisible visible and the absent present so I'm interested in the theatre as a place to practice a different kind of attention. The kind of attention, again, to borrow a phrase from Shannon Jackson, that's capable of seeing the non-autonomy of persons and the interdependencies of worlds. So in my PhD, and this obviously is um, an overly large project for, for one PhD, but it's a, a project to which I'm trying to contribute with my research. What I'm trying to do through my research is to try to work towards or try to work out ways in which the theatre might be able to produce spaces where these perspectives can thrive. So how can the theatre counter this sensation of a way? How can it counter this world concept that is ultimately imprecise and misleading and that acts as an obstacle um, to particular kinds of um, responsibility and furthers particular forms of passive denial or active denial, but also passive now. Um, so this can this can take uh, a lot of theatrical forms. So it can take the form, um, it can be site specific, like platforms and while London burns, which you can actually find online and is well worth um, listening to. Um, it could be in plays, uh, plays like uh, Sarah Kane's Blasted or Tim Crouch's The Author, which are very interested in theatrical space and what it is um, the audience is engaged with in the act of participating in that event. Um, it could be the work of companies that are rootedly local, like Slung Low in Holbeck in Leeds. Um, or it could be uh, in more peregrinatory companies, some, something like Rimini Protocol. Um, ultimately, the, it will find different forms in different theatres, um, both physical theatres and sort of metaphorical theatre practices. Um, but what I'm looking for um, are the conditions of my own gaze. Jason W. Moore says that climate isn't everything, but it's in everything. And the ambition of my research, what I'm trying to do through my PhD, 
is to work towards ways of allowing us to see it, to see climate when it's there.